Look at verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, so expiration date, obviously, self-explanatory. You don't need an NIV to explain to you more on that one. So uh, it's done. The thousand years are done. Satan shall be what? Loosed out of his prison. Remember, he's bound a thousand years down here, right? So the great red dragon is bound for a thousand years. And then he's going to be loosed out of this prison of his. Now, comes out of hell in great fury, the Bible says, at verse 8, and shall go out to deceive the nations. So he's going to go around the world. So he's going to go around the world and then start deceiving them. Notice over there it says Gog and what? Magog. All righty. Uh, so he's going out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. So that means he's going everywhere, not just one locality. He's going everywhere. All around the world. But then he mentions Gog and Magog as something specific. Now that's the second go goody that I'm going to leave to you. So then Gog and Magog, what is that? Gog and Magog go to the book of Ezekiel 37. For people who don't know, it's, it shows more in Ezekiel 37 that this guy is a person who's in charge of a region. That's what, it's, that's what that phrase is used for. Now, you've heard your pastor say quite a few times, this is referring to communist and Muslim nations, and then you go, how in the world can you get that with Gog and Magog, right? Because you've got to realize this. So, I hope your hand's at Revelation 22, because we're going to go back and forth. All right, let me explain over here. All right, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Let me jump back there, and then we'll call it a day. Notice at verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. So this is the spirit of the Lord speaking to Ezekiel. And then he talks about at chapter 37, he talks about his millennial reign. And then when you jump to 38, go to 38. Look at this. He talks about the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against who? Gog, the land of Magog. Notice the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Ah, so Gog is what? The chief prince. Magog is what? A land. Do we follow so far? Okay, again, king, Magog region. But look at this. The reason why I would say communist and nations is because if you go back to Revelation 20, Notice it's, uh, notice it's not just one region, right? It's what? It's nations, plural. So that's why Gog and Magog, a lot of people mention this if you study history too, that, that phrase is not just famous in your Bible, it's famous in a lot of different liter literary works too. Gog and Magog is used as an apocalyptic reference towards some sort of nation or end time nations. So it's more of a phrase, see? So Gog and Magog is a phrase. What is this phrase? It's a biblical prophetic phrase the Lord is wording for the nations. So our job is to investigate who these nations are. That's the point. How do we know they're nations? Because of Revelation 20. Nations are involved. But not only that, if you go back to Ezekiel 38, it's self-explanatory there. Verse 3, And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Og, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back. Now, go to the last Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Verse 6, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Ah, see, so these are nations. Now, think about this. If we're talking about literally these nations during Ezekiel's timeline, it's actually referring to today's nations, which number one religion is Islam. They're all nor they're, those nations are all the northern parts or the surrounding parts of Israel, actually. So these nations, uh, 
if you were to see Persia today, modern day Ethiopia, modern day Libya, modern day verse 6, Gomer, Tagarma, all that, it's ref uh, the, the rampant religion is Islam. Yeah. That's why we say it's Muslims. Where do we get the communists from? It's because of Magog. Why? For some of you who don't know, during Ezekiel's timeline, or close to his timeline, Josephus, the historian Josephus, ref referenced the Magog to the Scythians. So these guys are actually at the Black Sea region. As a matter of fact, if you study this group of people, they are undoubtedly, they are a permanent part of Russia's early history. That's Russia. But not only that, the most northernmost region that you can think of is Russia. It doesn't go beyond that one, actually. So Russia is the most northernmost region. Because look at verse 15. And thou shalt come from thy place out of where? North parts. Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. That's the reason why we put Russia over here. Because why? History shows that uh, during this timeline, the region of Magog is referring to Russia's most early inhabitants of that timeline. So Russia is a part of that. Not only that, um, it's referring to nations plural, right? If it's referring to nations plural, then that means we can't limit it to one country, Russia. This is why I add this one to it. Because it's referring to Magog's allies. Is that true at Ezekiel 37? Not just Magog, it's Magog's allies, the countries that he's allied with, right? Now think about it. Modern day Magog then, Russia, what are its allies? See, that's why. But not only that, we see these guys involved too. And by the way, you should, uh, you should study Russia. A lot of people don't study Russia. Do you know who's part of the, the peace treaty quartet of the Middle East? Yep. Didn't you know that? The, th uh, the three is not surprising because we know that uh, it's going to be part of the New World Order system. United Nations, right? The Bible says nations will gather together, come up against him. So we know that the New World Order system and the elites got in charge of that. The Antichrist will rule over it. United States, and we know they're a part of Revelation chapter 13 of that leopard. Remember, I taught you that one? European Union, you know who's the head chair of that one that they put? One of the, the people that they put as a special chair or heads is the Pope. And we know the Roman Catholic Church is going to be involved, Revelation 17, 18. We study that. And the fourth one, Russia. There is no doubt with this peace treaty with Israel and the Palestinians, see? Russia has to be a big player in that one. So that's what we know. So, but notice it goes throughout the four corners of the world, right? So then, mainly we know this. Mainly, it's going to be these two specific groups. Those are the specifics we know. And then what's going to happen is through these specifics, they're going to get all sorts of people around the world to be involved. And the number is huge. All right. Goodies I'll show next Revelation study, all right?